Hello everyone. The title of this video is Investigating Continuous Growth and Decay. Right, so each example I'm going to be doing in this video is taken directly from a free online textbook at openstacks.org. I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text, section 6.1 called Exponential Functions, and I'm under the heading Investigating Continuous Growth. And each example I do will be either an example from the reading, or one of the Try It problems from the reading, or one of the exercises at the end of the section that are related to this particular objective. Okay, now in, the, in a previous video, I introduce to you the number E. Right. Now all I ask that you really remember about the number E from the previous video is that E, when you see it, is approximately 2.7. Right. It's, it's more than that. It go, it's irrational. Like it's 2.7182818284590455 blah 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 blah. If you just know that it's about 2.7, I'm fine with that. Now, uh, we've also seen, you know, like the uh, compound interest formula in previous videos. And that was actually up here. Going back to, this was the compound interest formula in this section. And this described how money grew in an account that paid a certain interest rate over so many years. And the number of times interest was compounded was this value of n. Right? n was the number of compounding periods in one year. And that showed up you know, here in the formula and also in the exponent. Right? And if you compounded monthly, n was 12. If you compounded weekly, n was 52. Right? Daily, n was 365. The question now becomes, what if n increased forever. What if n was going to infinity? What if n was a thousand, a million, a billion, a Google, a Googleplex, whatever, right? Just larger and larger. Well, then we have this situation where we're getting into not just the growth of money, but continuous growth of, of, of money, right? Well, there is a limit to it. And this is our continuous growth model. What happens as n goes to infinity? Well, you can't plug in infinity for n. Infinity is not a number. So you end up with a formula that doesn't have n anymore. And that's this here. So here's the continuous growth slash decay formula, right? If you're grow you can talk about the growth of money or the decay of a, radio a radioactive isotope. Um, talk about radioactive decay. Well, that will be mentioned in this particular problem too. Population decay, population decline, whatever. Um, so for all real numbers t, which will usually represent time, and all positive numbers a and r, r will be like a rate, a rate of growth, a rate of decay, kind of like interest rate for money continuous growth or decay is represented by the following formula. A of t, capital A of t, represents the amount at time t equals, you know, some initial amount, initial value, kind of like the principal, remember the principal p for money, a times e to the rt, there's that number e again, right, e is 2.7 something, right? to the r times t power. Again, notice there's no n in this formula anymore, because n is infinity. And you can't really use infinity as a number. So yeah, a is the initial value, r is called the continuous growth rate, or the continuous decay rate if it's negative, right? You'll see here, if r is positive, you'll see continuous growth. If r is a negative number, then the formula represents continuous decay, right? So you have, when r is positive, the function's increasing from left to right. 
uh, when you graph it. When r is negative, the function's decreasing from left to right. And t is the elapsed time. So it could be in years, and days, and months, and weeks. Now when we're talking money, like they're saying here, for business applications, right? the continuous growth formula is called continuous compounding formula. And, you know, the initial, that, remember that initial amount A I called, you know, the principal, that was P. So it's the same formula. The amount after T years is P times E to the RT. Same thing, just A is replaced by P. And T represents time in years when you're talking about money. Uh, we'll see some other problems where, you know, T represents time in days or weeks or minutes, you know, and it could be for anything that either grows or decays continuously. But this is the model that we will be using in the video today. All right, so let's look at an example with a money problem. So a person invests a hundred thousand dollars. So remember the investment, that initial amount. That's the principal. That's that's going to be the value of P at a nominal 12% interest rate, that's the APR, right? That's going to be the value of R, that's the, the, the growth rate, the interest rate right? per year, compounded continuously. And the, the key word is going to be continuously. All right, that's the key word here. Because if they said it was compounded, you know, annually, semi-annually, you know, quarterly, monthly, daily. If they said any of those words, then you'd be using the old interest formula with the n in it, because n is not infinity in those cases. But compounded continuously means that the value of n is approaching infinity, so you can't really use n. You got to use this formula. Right? The amount after t years, the amount the account is worth, is the principal times e to the rt power. Right? So when you see the word continuously, you, ha you have to think this formula, this continuous growth rate mo uh, growth model. No ends anywhere to be seen. So what will be the value of the investment in 30 years? Right? So what's a of 30? t is time in years here. What's a of 30? Well, that would be you know, the principal one hundred thousand dollars times e and then the exponent on e is you know now remember r is twelve percent you're not going to write twelve though you're going to write point one two right you know twelve divided by a hundred point one two you write it as a decimal so the r t zero point one two times t times thirty Right, and that's a uh, 3.6, right? So that's 100,000 times e to the 3.6 power. E to the 3.6 power. And we're going to round this, you know, to the to the nearest cent. And I'm just going to go to a calculator. I'm going to go to that free online calculator at Desmos, right, desmos.com, and punch this in, 100,000 times e raised to the 3.6 power. So after 30 years, right, if this $100,000 was put in this account that grew continuously, compounded continuously, and was left alone for 30 years um, with this 12% interest rate per year, right, uh, the account would be worth three million uh, six hundred fifty-nine thousand eight hundred and twenty-three dollars and uh, approximately 44 cents if I round to the nearest cent. All right, and that's, that's what I'm writing, that's what I'm circling back on my paper here. Right. Yeah, that's it. But again, the key word is continuously. I'm sorry, there's a U there, that's O-U-S. <laughs> um, the key word is continuously, though. It didn't say weekly or monthly or daily, right? It compounded continuously, con growth continuously. So if you see that, you, you, you automatically have to jump to this model, this formula. 
the amount after t years is the initial amount p, the principal, the, the initial value, the, pre the present value, times e to the rt power. Right, please understand this. Okay, but as I said before, though, you know, this, uh, this doesn't have to be growth all the time. We can talk about decay, like radioactive decay you may have heard of. So that's what my second example's on. So, uh, radon 222, this is a, this is a radioactive isotope of radon. Radon has 86 protons, so this would have 86 protons and 136 neutrons to be 222, right? Um, whatever, radon 222 is a radioactive isotope of radon, and it, it, it decays. Now, I don't know all the chemistry stuff in physics. We're not getting into any of that, right? But it decays at a continuous rate, and that, again, those are the key words, decaying at a continuous rate. So if I see that word continuous, continuous rate, we're using this model. The amount of radon after t days, right, time is going to be in days now, is equal to some initial amount, little a, times, and then e to the RT power. Right, that E's got to be there when we talk about, you know, growth or decay at a continuous rate, continuous rate, growth, continuous decay. Please understand that you must jump to this model here. And they give us that rate. Now, be careful. I did say this uh, say this earlier. We haven't seen it yet. But if I see the word decays, that means that this rate r needs to be negative. Negative rate. If we're talking growth, like in the first problem, the rate has to be positive, right? The rate was 12%, 0.12 positive in the last problem. But here I see the word decays. We have a decreasing amount over time. So your, this rate in this e to the rt needs to be negative. So if I see a decay at a continuous rate of 17.3%, r is equal to negative 0.173 right, as a decimal. So we have a of t equals a times e to the negative 0.173t power. Right. Please be aware of that. That's a common mistake people make. They mess that up. Decay has to have a negative R, and growth has a positive R. Right. Be aware of that. Please pay attention. All right. So uh, the question is, how much will 100 milligrams of radon-222 radon decay to in three days? All right. So this is the initial amount here. Right, this is the amount at time zero. So that's the value of that lowercase a. So now the model looks like this. A of t equals you know 100, the initial amount of radon 222, times e to the negative 0 0.173, right, the, the negative rate, because this is a decay problem, times t. And again, t represents time in days this time, right? Everything's in days per day, three days, instead of years. And then the question is, how much of this will be left in three days? So what's the amount of radon 222 left after three days? What's A of 3? And I just go to my function here, go to this decay model, and plug in 3 for t. It's, very, it's really that simple once you know the initial amount and the, and the rate. That's 100 times e to the negative 0 0.173 times 3 power. Just make sure that's all in the exponent, though. And we're going to round this to the nearest, I don't know, how about the nearest hundredth of a gram? Let's go two, three, let's go two decimal places. Right. Hundredth of a milligram. All right, so back here, calculator. we got 100 times e raised to the, you know, uh, double parentheses here, negative, uh, so I have the rate, negative 0 
times the three days and again make sure that's why I got the double parentheses so I know that that's all in the exponent on E and there we go and it should be smaller right my final result should be smaller because I had that negative rate we have a decrease a continuous decrease rate over time so about 59.51 milligrams are left so approximately 59.51 milligrams of you know the, this radon 222 isotope are left after three days. Okay, so again, uh, the, I think the most difficult thing for people is to remember to jump to you know you see continuous growth, continuous decay. You're jumping to this model, and also you see decay. R must be negative. If you see growth, R must be positive. Right, be be aware of that. All right. So now my third example is back to a growth of money. All right. So we have principal and time in years again. So here, suppose an investment account is opened with an initial deposit. Uh, initial deposit. That's the principal, twelve thousand dollars, earning seven point two percent interest compounded. compounded and there it is again, there's that word, continuously, continuous growth rate. How much will the account be worth after 30 years? So once again, I'm using this model. The amount the account will be worth after t years must be the principal or the initial amount times e to the rt power. And again, that's because I saw this word continuously, continuous growth. And because it is growth, R is going to be positive. So the value of R is positive 0 0.072, right? That's 7.2% as a decimal. Uh, the principal we know is the initial investment, the initial amount, that's 12,000. And the time T is in years here, they say what, what happens after 30 years. Right? So I'm just plugging this stuff in. The, the amount the account will be worth after 30 years is going to be 12,000 times e to the 0 0.072 times 30 power. And again, make sure all of that is in the exponent. Maybe put parentheses around it uh, when you type it in. Just make sure it's all in the exponent. All right, again, I'll punch that in. We'll round to the nearest cent. 12,000 was the initial investment. e raised to the 0 0.072, that was the interest rate, the, the, the annual interest rate, uh, times 30, right, 30 years, and there we go. So this would grow to be worth, just make sure all my decimals are in the right place, 0 0.072, 30, 12,000, excellent. So this would grow to be a, worth about 104,000. Uh, $53, and if you're on to, to the nearest cent, $0.65. Cents. Right. There we go, I just wrote it there and circled it. Yeah, it's really that simple though. You're jumping, you see the word continuously, you got to think I'm working with this model. The amount after a certain amount of time is the initial amount times e to the rt, and r is positive for growth, r is negative for decay. All right, and then uh, my last examples, I have three of them, are just, uh, we're just given some functions, and all we're asked to do is determine if the equation represents continuous growth, continuous decay, or neither. So does it look like this, where you have, you know, again, the amount after some time is the some initial amount, A or P or whatever, times E to the RT? Does it have that form? And if it does, you know, is R positive? If R is positive, you got growth. Is R negative? If R is negative, you have decay. And if it doesn't look like this form at all, if the function can't be written in this form, then you have neither. It's not going to be a you know, you can't talk about exponentially growing continuously or decaying continuously if it doesn't even, if it can't even look like this, if it can't even take on this form. 
All right, so example four. So yeah, just determine whether the equation represents continuous growth, decay, or neither. So once again, I'll write this out. So we have a, we want we want things to look like this. Can we write them this way? A of t equals you know little a the some initial amount times e to the r t. That's you know step one. Step two is you know is r positive? And if yes, you know growth. You have continuous growth. If that's if the answer to that's no, you say is r negative, is r less than zero, and if that's the case, then you have decay, continuous decay. Uh, and if the answer to this is no, you know, then it's 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 not neither one of those things, right? So this is in that form, right? We have y equals some initial amount, you know, three thousand seven hundred forty-two times e to the r t. R here is 0 0.75, which is positive. So this is an exponential growth model. This is a continuous growth model. Right, and if you were to graph it, I'll do that on Desmos, uh, you'd see the exponential growth of it, right? As you go from left to right, the, the output would be increasing. So you know, y equals, I'll just type it the way they gave it, 3,742 times e raised to the 0.75t. Right, now I can't see too much here, but if I zoom out, you can definitely see over here, see the exponential growth. Looks exactly like any other exponential function. Domain's all real numbers, range is all positive numbers, and it is definitely increasing from left to right. It's definitely some sort of exponential growth model. Great. Now this next one, same question. Now it looks like this, right? It has the same form as the other model. Uh, any exponential growth or decay model, y equals you know some initial amount, 2.25 times e to the r t. This time though r is negative two, so it's like you know negative, that's 200 percent, right? written as a decimal, but still neg it's still negative though. So it's got that form a times e to the r t. Great it's a continuous growth or decay model and since the value of r is negative this is a continuous decay model and we're gonna see when I put this into my calculator and look at the graph of it that it'll be decreasing you know it's gonna be going down like, uh, but still like an exponential function though it's still gonna have a horizontal asymptote and everything Domains all real numbers, range is all positive numbers, horizontal asymptote is going to be the, the t axis or the horizontal axis. It's just going to be decreasing as I go from left to right, and we'll see that here. So I'm just going to kind of mess with this and change it up. So the, the initial value this time was 2.25, and then the exponent had negative 2t instead of 0.75t. And you see the decrease? See, it's just like any other exponential model you've seen. Domains all real numbers, range is all positive numbers, horizontal axis is the as, uh, horizontal asymptote. But it's definitely, as you go from left to right, definitely decreasing. So a, uh, an exponential decay model, continuous decay. All right, and then my final example, still asking the same question, you know, asking us to determine if this is representing a you know, continuous exponential growth, continuous exponential decay, or neither. This function is not, by our definition in this text, this is not one of our exponential functions. This is not even an exponential function. Because look, you know, you have a, sure you have some, look, it looks like an initial amount, 150 times e to the, 
Now, this is not r times t, this is r divided by t, right? 3.25 divided by t. So, see how t can't even be zero here. Because if you had t be zero, you'd be, you know, you'd, this fraction in the power would have a de denominator of zero, and that's not good, that's undefined. So, the domain of this function is not all real numbers. Right? The domain of this function is every number but zero, and that doesn't happen for exponential functions. Right? Exponential functions, by our definition, has a domain of all real numbers. This does not. So since this isn't even an exponential function, this is neither a continuous growth or a continuous decay model. So neither continuous growth nor decay model. Decay. But it's neither. And that's it. All right, and if I were to show you the graph of this thing, you're going to see it's not the graph of an exponential function like we're used to, like we've seen in the last couple of examples. This one's going to be, I think, kind of odd, actually. Um, let me show you. So I'm changing this value here to 150, and then instead of you know negative 2 times t, we have a 3.25 divided by t in the exponent. And you see how I like it says zero zero, but you can't really use zero. I mean, I don't know why it's there. Like things let me just tell you this, things get funky near zero. So I think it's just, you know, calculators only have so much power. But yeah, you see how it doesn't even continue onwards, and yeah, I, I don't know why it doesn't. Because uh, you should be able to plug in positive values of t unless they're... Way out here, I don't know. But still, something bad happens. Like, it looks nice, but it's not, it's definitely not a complete exponential function. Right, it's not what you would expect from an exponential function at all. The domain is not all real numbers, right? um, as it would be for an exponential function. Right, so since it's not an exponential function, you know, it's, it's neither going to be a continuous exponential growth nor a continuous exponential decay model. Right. And that looks like an explanation point. That should be model. Right. Okay. Right, I hope that makes sense. All right, so uh, hopefully after watch, that's it for this video. Hopefully after watching me going through these six examples here, you sh you know you can identify an exponential, you know, a continuous exponential growth and decay model, something that looks like this, and notice when r is positive or when r is negative. Um, and also, you know, I'm hoping that given such a model. You know, you should be able to evaluate it, you know, plug things in, figure out certain amounts, figure out certain values, right? and, and, you, and use the model properly. Right? But the key word again is this word continuous. You see the word continuous? You know, continuous growth, continuous decay, con compounded continuously. you got to be using a model like this that I'm pointing at right now. All right? cool. So I'm hoping that this helps and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.